Hello everybody. Welcome to our introduction of the new process type resistance spot welding, which is available with Unifac Welding version 5. My name is Jens Seiderer. I'm the product manager of Unifac Welding, and I would like to welcome Jörn Hilbers, one of our development engineers who was highly involved in the development of this additional welding module. Hello Jörn, I'm happy to welcome you for an online live demonstration. But before we start to go to our program, I would like to ask you a few questions about our motivation and some theoretical background. Thank you, Jens. I'm looking forward to present you our new possibilities. With the resistance spot welding module, we will make a big step forward for sheet metal manufacturing, especially for the automotive industry. Ten years ago, we started with Unifact Welding as a tool for distortion calculation based on mathematical descriptions for the moving heat sources. So this was pure structural welding simulation. But now, with resistance spot welding, the gun forces have a sensitive influence on the electrical heating. So what type of welding simulation is covered with this new resistance spot welding module? Our theme for version 5 was closer to the process. So we, went, uh, so we want to close the gap between the different types of welding simulation. For beam and arc processes, we included an import and export function for the welding parameter, including the heat sources. But for resistance spot welding, we developed a complete coupled process and structural simulation. That sounds good. But what is now the objective of such a welding simulation? We know process simulation is used to identify influence on the processes. For example, the influence of coating. Structural welding simulation has its focus on the distortion of complex geometries. The good news, we can do both. Of course, depending on your objective, you have to choose a different modeling strategy. If you want to identify the best process parameters, you should not use a complete side frame of a car to test it. This wouldn't be done in reality as well. On the other hand, you should not use the highest mesh density to identify distortions of complex structures. Please let me explain some theoretical background and assumptions we are using. Resistance spot welding is a joining method where two sheets are heated up in the joining area by using the joule heating. Due to the melting process of the material and the welding gun force, the material compound is formed after solidific solidification of the material. All resistance welding processes can be seen as a serial circuit of different electrical resistances. This figure here shows a simple example of a resistance spot welding process. You see both electrodes in red color and the sheets in black color. Both electrodes and sheets have their own material resistance. In addition, each contact area has also a resistance, a contact resistance. All these resistances are built up as a serial circuit. The highest resistance in the previously shown uh, serial circuit causes a conversion of electrical energy into thermal energy. This effect is called joule heating. The converted electrical energy is also called, called electrical thermal equivalent. For a stationary electrical current, the heat flux is calculated by the resistance times electrical current squared. So, on the previous slides, I talked a lot of resistances. Let me explain you details about the different types of electrical resistances. The first mentioned resistance is the workpiece resistance. It describes the ability of a workpiece to interfere the electrical current flux. This value is specified is specific for a certain workpiece and depends on geometry and material resistive, resistivity. The independent description uses the electrical material resistivity. The second mentioned resistance is the contact resistance. It describes the ability of a contact to interfere the electrical current flux. This value is specific for a certain contact situation and depends on contact area, surface roughness, contact pressure, coatings, and materials. The independent description uses electrical contact resistivity. 
So what about the influences you just mentioned, how they are implemented in the program and how can we get the data? You can use directly measured data in the dependency of the temperature or you can just use the bay one equation which we implemented as a default value into a fuck welding and which covers all the mentioned influences. So can you give us a closer insight of the behavior of the resistances during the process? Okay, let's go to the next slide. In general, the contact resistance is about 30 times higher than the material resistance. Both resistances are strongly dependent on temperature. Additionally, the contact resistance is also pressure dependent. This can be seen in the diagram below. The blue line describes the contact resistance during the process. So why does it not increase during cooling again? The spot is now welded and both steel sheets are joined to one body. So there is no contact anymore after welding. And the material resistance? During heating, the electrical resistance increases till we turn off the electrical current and the peak point. Simulfact welding does not use the electrical resistance to assemble the matrix equation, but the electrical conductance, which is the reciprocal of the electrical resistance. Furthermore, for constant electrical contact conductivity or temperature-dependent electrical contact conductivity, simulfact welding does not use the pure, pure contact conductivity, but the product of contact conductivity times thickness of the contact area. In case the bay one equation is used, the user has only to provide the thickness of the contact area, which is called film thickness. Also, a special feature I want to explain is the gluon peak temperature contact. This contact type is activated as soon as the defined glue temperature is reached, which is often the lower melting temperature of both contact partners. If the glue temperature is reached, you will set the electrical contact conductivity to a very high level. Also, the thermal heat transfer coefficient is set very high. And last but not least, we set the mechanical glue contact in this area. These three properties that are changed present the behavior of the joint. Thanks for the explanation of the specific behavior um, of the contact zones for the, the other physical disciplines. But can you also explain us how we model the heat losses of the, to the electrodes? This might be import, an important influence because it can prevent the sheet surface to melt. Sure. As you mentioned, the heat loss to the electrodes is important for the process. The heat transfer is defined as shown here in this equation. The parameter small a is the heat transfer coefficient and essential for the equation. In simulfact welding, we use rigid electrodes with a fixed temperature. These electrodes act like heat sinks in the model and can transport heat out of the sheets. The heat transfer between electrode and sheet is determined using an automatic equation which depends on contact pressure as here seen in the below figure and the thermal conductivity of the sheet and the electrode material. The last thing I want to discuss is the coupling of the single analysis in simulfact welding. At first we will perform an electrical analysis to calculate the released heat uh, due to the joule heating. This results are applied as a boundary condition for the second analysis, the thermal analysis. Here we calculate the temperature field, but also temperature thermal strains and activate glue contact if necessary and reset plastic strains if necessary. Afterwards, we will calculate phase fraction, volume change and other parameters in the metallurgical analysis. At the end, Mechanical stresses and strains are calculated in the mechanical analysis. Every result field is transferred into the following time step. Thanks a lot, Jörn. Now we want to see a live demonstration. Okay, thank you, Jens. I will show you now a live demonstration of our resistance spot welding in Simulfact welding. In this demonstration, we want to weld two angled sheets using four spot welds. The sheets are constrained by two fixings. So now at first, we have to start our Simulfact welding version 5.
as you already know, we have to create a new project under new project. I will call my project spot welding and save it on the desktop. In Simulfact Welding 5, we implemented different process types like arc welding, beam welding, resistant spot welding and the cooling and clamping process type. So we can also model process steps. Yeah, correct. These process types contain different default settings for solver and other stuff. So in this case, we want to create a resistant spot welding process. You see now the icon has changed to, to the resistant spot welding icon. We use an ambient temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and no gravity. As I already said, we want to use or we want to weld two sheets. So we have to set two components. The two sheets are fixed by two fixings. So set two fixings. And every spot welding process needs at least one robot. This can be a C-spot gun or a X-spot gun. Um, tutorial files and info sheets will um, describe the different movement and kinematics of each uh, robot and I can show you uh, after the demonstration how you can find the info sheet and the new tutorial. So in this tutorial uh, we will use one C-spot gun. So we set C-spot gun to one. Afterwards we can Confirm this dialog by clicking OK. You will see now here on the desktop a new spot welding uh, folder is created which contain every process we create here and every catalog objects. So for a better view I will now maximize my window. You see here our new process tree for resistant spot welding and we have to fill our process tree with the catalog objects. But at first I will rename my process to, for example, spot welding, just for better identification. So the best strategy is to fill the catalog from top to bottom. Let's start with the geometries. I will import geometries from BDF files. The BDF files are pre-positioned and in the unit meters. So I can select all my BDF files click off open and now this dialog appears. As I said the BDF files are unit meter so I can check this checkbox to, imp to use this uh, unit for all BDF files. For the fixings I do not use volume meshes but surface meshes as the fixings are rigid body so this is okay and I can just close this dialog with import and for the other fixing. So now I have the geometries in my catalog and I can simply drag and drop the catalog objects in my process and you see now the model view is already opened. The same for sheet 2 and also for fixing 1 and fixing two. And now you see the fixings are not are, are no longer uh, highlighted red. This means for the fixings we don't have to do any user interaction anymore. Sheets and robots are still highlighted. So now we have our geometries and we need a material for our sheets. Just right click on materials and select library. This opens our effect material and we have also, also already predefined our area of application with welding. For this tutorial we use the 22 MNB5 steel. Just by selecting the steel and clicking OK the material is imported in welding. So this is a press hardening steel, a typical automotive steel for, uh, which undergoes uh, phase transformation. Is that considered in the material data? Yeah, correct. We can open the material file by double click on it. Simulfact material opens now a new dialog. And you see here we have a new page introduced called electrical properties. 
On this page we have the electrical resistivity and our electrical conductivity. As I mentioned for in a few minutes ago on the presentation, the conductivity is a reciprocal of the resistivity. So to avoid any user uh, interaction failures or errors, the resistivity is calculated into conductivity and the other way around. So if you change resistivity, you also change conductivity. So let's have a look how the resistivity is defined. This is a typical electrical resistivity for a typical steel, you know. So the resistivity is defined in terms of temperature and also in terms of phases. So you are able to define different resistivities for different phases. But this is only an example steel, so we use the same resistivity for every phase. So if it's only, if the material data is only used for one spot or one heating, it will of course start with the yeah, initial phase and then transforms to austenite and has no longer any influence. So we can also use the different um, material data for the different phases to implement also the influence of the, yeah, of the martensite or bainite formation um, when calculating shunting effects. Is that correct? Yeah, this is correct. We uh, consider different phases and also if you, if you save different electrical resistivities for different phases, we consider this in the simulation. So let's close this dialog with OK and drag and drop the material on the sheets. And you see the sheets are no longer highlighted red, so the sheets do not use a, a user interaction anymore. But Jens, as you said, we have a multi-phase material, so we have to set a simple option, double click on sheet, and then activate use phase fraction. And in this case, we define, for example, could or we can define 100% binite or whatever else. So Jens, what would you define in this case? It's a typical press hardening steel, so it should be martensite after okay. press hardening. Let's define 100% martensite for sheet one and the same for sheet two, sorry, 100 and here is zero. Okay, so sheets and fixings are defined. So the next thing we have to do is we have to define where we want to weld our spot welds. So we, for resistance spot welding, we implemented the new point sequence trajectories and let's just create a new one. So here, um, in this dialog now appears and we have to define for a point sequence the actual coordinate where the point uh, should be welded and an orientation which defines uh, uh, yeah, the rotation axis of the lower electrode of the weld gun. So for the weld robot we also have to define an orientation and both orientations uh, will be aligned in the simulation but we can visualize this after we did the simulation to, to have a better view. So am I correct? These points are the used reference points. So the same point I define with my uh, robot. Yeah, and it's correct. That it can correct. be also a point on the surface or a millimeter um, away from the sheet or is it directly or has it or is it the point in between the two sheets where the um, weld nugget will uh, you occur. You can define the point wherever you want to. So you can define it on the surface of the, the upper sheet or on the surface of the lower sheet, between both sheets or somewhere in between. It, you have all options open. So for this point sequence, I will use an orientation local vector. You have two options local second point, so you have to define the orientation using a second point. And for local vector, you can just enter a vector based on your spot weld position. So both coordinates are in global coordinates. Cool, this is correct, yes. The last thing we can enter is the post time. 
the pause time should simulate um, the movement from one spot weld to another and we simulate this pause time as a cooling load case. This can be set equal for all points you have to define or you can set it by hand for um, some points you want to set a longer pause time. So just let's just fill this point sequence. We will use four points with the following coordinates. So I see also the icon for the node sets. So it's also possible to import node sets. Yeah, this is correct. You can also imp import node sets or what we implemented with welding 5 is you can easily drag and drop node set on a trajectory or on the trajectory object here. Or what you can also do is you can drag and drop a node set on the robot and the corresponding trajectory is created automatically. So we did a lot of stuff for user interaction in this case. So and now the orientation minus one minus one and because it is an angle sheet we have to do some sine and cosine operation to get the orientation. Okay, now we are finished. We will use the pause time of one second. We can confirm this dialog by clicking OK. You see now a new point sequence is created. You can now rename the point sequence, but we will use a suggested name. So just drag and drop the point sequence on the robot and you will now see in the model view that the points are created. In this case, the points are located on the surface of the green sheet and the orientation is normal to the surface here. Okay, now we have to create our welding parameters. So for resistance spot welding, we can yeah, yes. see here a yellow line yes. similar to the, to the one we have for line sequence. That's right, correct. Can you explain it, please? Yeah, for point sequences, the yellow line just indicates in which order the spots are welded. So let me zoom out a bit and deactivate the mesh. You see the first point is here, the this one. Then the yellow line indicates this one as a second point. Now if I rotate, I see the yellow line on the other side, which goes diagonal to the third point and last to the fourth point. So it is not like a weld seam, but it shows the order in which the points are welded. Perfect. Okay, let's start with the welding parameters. For resistance spot welding, we have here the resistance spot welding parameters. On the first page, you can enter general properties like uh, process type, material combination, or you can um, add microstructure images. So you can describe your welding parameters in a very detailed way. And we already, uh, we also included the functionality to export this, um, yeah, yeah, heat source parameter um, object. So it's possible to export it and store it with all the needed information and then to re-import it. Yes, correct. So we will do not enter anything on this page, for example, but let's go on the second page. So here we see the weld gun clamp force and the electrical current. Both are temperature, uh, sorry, time dependent tables. So we can rename this tables, but we will just use the um, default name. And let's enter the clamp force table. Just click edit. A new dialog appears. And what we will do now is we want to have a constant clamp force of 5,000 newtons or five kilonewtons. 
in the complete process. So it goes, the, the welding process goes from 0 to 0 0.25, apply and OK. So you see now here the table information has turned to the one I just entered. So let's go to the electrical current. Here we should um, we should keep in mind that we have to apply the clamp force before we turn on the current. So we have to add five points. 0 0.03. 0 0.05, 0 0.24, and at the last 0 0.25. So you see, both tables must have the same time duration to uh, avoid any errors in the model check. And now the currents, 3,500 kilo amperes, 3,500, and zero. So this is what I meant. You have to make sure here in the first two millis in the first milliseconds that the clamp force is applied before you turn on the current. And very important is to model the current not as a step function, but here as shown here with a little ramp to avoid that we input the complete energy in a single time step, because this will um, lead to very bad convergence. So we de defined our electrical current, can close this dialog. You see now here the table information, nothing is red anymore. This indicates that our welding parameters are defined properly. So close it and now drag and drop the welding parameter on the robot. And you see the robot is still red because we haven't defined a lower and upper electrode and the weld gun kinematics. So just double click on the C-spot gun. The first page shows the time, man time management and an overview of the different point sequences attached to the robot. But as we just have one point sequence, we can simply go to the next page. So this is really important for the weld gun robot kinematics now. At first, we can choose our lower and upper electrode, and with Simulfact welding, we ship a large library of electrode geometries according to ISO, let me just see, 5821 standard. So for this example, we will just use this type here of electrode for lower and upper. And for the effect based electrode library, we implemented a function that will automatically position and switch the electrode geometries to model a closed gun by pressing this OK button. So we can have a look after I defined the rest of the properties. So the coordinates mentioned in the second part here are the, are the initial or um, coordinates for these electrodes? Um, no, for the, for the weld gun we define a local coordinate system to move the electrodes to the defined spot weld in the point sequence. So in general, it, it is not always true, but in general the reference point is here, the highest point of the lower electrode, and the second point defines the orientation. So this is what I said a few times ago. This orientation, the red line, is aligned to the orientation we defined in the point sequence. So the database electrodes are already predefined in the XZ coordinate system, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And the lower electrode will be automatically turned by 180 degrees? Yes, to model a closed spot weld gun. So, and this reference point here, the red one, um, is aligned to the spot weld coordinate we defined in the point sequence. And to avoid any penetration between uh, sheets and electrodes due to welding distortion or just in case you model the, the reference or the, the spot weld 
between the sheets, we, de we can define an approach distance to reference point. What this means, um, we can have a closer look in the results. So this is all getting clear later. So the opened or the, the closed weld gun will be opened first. I see it here in the second line, initial weld gun opening distance. Yes. And then the lower electrode will start with an approach distance of five millimeters and is brought into contact to the reference point. Yes, this is correct. So we can just use the default values here in this dialog beside the electrodes. And now when I click OK, the electrode geometries will appear here and the in the catalog and also in the robot. So I just do it. You see now we have two new geometries applied to the robot. And this is what I just mentioned. The electrodes are automatically flipped and positioned in the global origin like a closed spot weld gun. Okay, now you see the robot is also not highlighted anymore. And the last thing we have to do is go on the solver pages. So as we are using a multi-phase material, we can activate our phase transformation option here. If you want to use parallelization, you can activate this box and use DDM or our new SMP parallelization. Both options are, um, are, can be used for resistance spot welding, so we get no problems here. So I just use four cores here. And now time control. We defined our point sequence and our welding parameters, and this leads to a process time. But it's also possible to define a bigger end time and the time between uh, the, the, work, the end of the working time of the robot till the defined end time here will be simulated as a cooling load case. So we just want to simulate 10 seconds. As you want to see some results in our spot welding, we can enter here 21 number of welding result steps. And we just entered a pause time of one second. So I want to see two time steps or two result steps during cooling and I just enter 0 0.5. So refinement. For resistance spot welding, we will refine every element which is inside a cylindrical refinement box, as you can see here on the picture. And the refinement box is moved together with the weld gun. So in this case, the radius of the cylinder should be three millimeters, and I want to use a refinement level of one. It is also possible to activate unrefinement, which means if the weld gun moves to the next point, the f <coughs> sorry, the first spot weld is unrefined, but we don't want to use this here in, in this tutorial. Okay, so the, let's, the last page is electrical contact conductivity, which describes the contact behavior for the electrical calculation. As I said in the presentation, we implemented the bay oneheim equation, which are here, or which is here called automatically. And you also can define a coating resistivity in terms as a constant or as a table dependent on temperature. But for this tutorial, we will just use uh, the pure equation. The film thickness here will be 0 0.01 millimeter for electrode component contact and com uh, contact between the components. Here we prepared an info sheet for you. So if you just click on the on this button, an info sheet in a PDF format will open, which describes very detailed what options can be used and, and which equation equation is used. And uh, we set set this info sheets um, also for uh, for the for the robot. So I can just show you this. 
go back to the robot weld gun and here we also create a new info sheet for the resistance bot welding robot. If you want to have a very detailed look to the tutorial, we created a new tutorial which can be found here under help and then tutorial. It does not only contain resistance spot welding, but also arc welding, beam welding, <coughs> thermal cycle methods, and some basic um, knowledge about seam effect welding. Okay, so now our process is ready for simulation. You can save it and start the simulation using this button. So how long, how long will it take? So especially this simulation takes about 20 to 25 minutes but I prepared a project already with examples so I have it on the desktop it's here just open it yes so you will see it is identical to the project we just created but we have results, so open the results. So please show me the temperature. So this is the temperature distribution and we can just so we'll go, go through the movement. So yeah, this is what you, what you mentioned. In the first time step, the wild gun is opened, um, 50 millimeters as described in the robot dialogue. The second time step is we move the complete gun to the first uh, spot weld position with the orientation in the point sequence. With the initial distance to the yeah, reference correct, point. Correct, with the initial distance here. And then we will approach the lower electrode to the reference point in the point sequence, close the gun, and then begin our welding process. So we made our electrodes translucent for, for just for the result view so we can have a better view what is, is happening here on, this, on the sheet surface. Can you show the... Okay, so we are welding. Mm. And this is the end of the welding process. Now the next step is to Open. Before you go okay. further, can you go please one step back? Yeah, no problem. Can you show us the distortions? Yeah, sure. Total distortion. And here you see, due to the clamping force, we get distortions of nearly half a millimeter. So go back to temperature. And now this is the ending of our first spot weld and we can now go to the next step which is opening the gun then we have our cooling load case and then move to the next spot which is here on this side approach the lower electrode close the gun and weld our second point and now i will activate the mesh so here you see our additive meshing, adaptive meshing. And in terms of our um, results, we also added electrical results for our uh, electrical analyzers. You can evaluate the electrical potential, current density, electric thermal energy density, and the electrical contact conductivity. And all these result values are described in the tutorial, so for a detailed look, um, please have a look at our tutorials and we can just have a look at the peak temperature and let this, let this run to the end. So this is the second spot weld. Now we are welding the third one. And now the last one. And after the last spot weld is welded, we have some seconds of cooling time. Yes, and the spot weld is, or the weld gun is positioned back to the origin again. So 
So after cooling you can also see the deformation of the surface due to the electrode. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. So thanks a lot, Zion. You're welcome, no problem. I'm sure we will have a lot of fun with this new module. I hope so. Okay, hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.